Hey, uh, everybody. This is our discussion slash notes on epithelial tissue. Um, I would like to use this document kind of to introduce you to epithelial tissue. You already did it. Um, should be done. So let's just go over it a little bit and a couple of things to highlight. Okay, first of all, a little bit of review because what I noticed is that most of you, many of you don't really make this connection. So they're showing these diagrams and last hour people are like, well, these are just boxes with purple circles in them and then there's an orange thing and you forget that, that a group of cells that work together make a tissue. So what we're looking at here, each one of these little diagrams represents a cell. Now this thing doesn't, we'll come back to that in a minute, but each one of these little things represents a cell. So if that's true, all of these things are made up of cells and some kind of layer here. And that layer will be discussed on the next page. So, again, a group of cells that work together make a tissue. One kind of tissue is called epithelial tissue. And it's epithelial tissue we're looking at here. There are also two others which we'll talk about a little later. So if we go on to the next page then, excuse me while I move my button around. Page 2. Okay, yada, 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 what is a basement? I'm assuming you can figure that out. Um, this thing, so epithelial tissue has a group of cells, and those cells make something called a basement membrane. And so, scrolling down then to the diagram below, I'm going to move this up so you can see it better on the screen and erase my ink on the slide. So what they're trying to show here is that the lumen is like a space, right? So again, this is inside of a human or any other animal that you have this group of cells that lines openings, you're going to want to write down these verbs. I'm going to add a couple things to this. All right, so the opening in this case is this thing is the lumen. Here, it just says surface. We'll come back to that. Uh, it can cover something. And with lining and covering, that makes it protective. And another verb we'll use, which we'll come back to as we build our definition of epithelial tissue, epithelial tissue is secrete. They can secrete things. Um, we'll come back to this word here in a bit. Okay, now I didn't expect you to come up with this definition, but I would like you to make sure you have those verbs written down as far as things that epithelial tissue does. So if we go to the next slide. Okay, so on this slide, all they wanted you to do is identify, they're showing you now micrographs of epithelial tissue, and you just have to identify the basement membrane and free surface. That's not so hard to do, I don't think. Here are, here's a double, this one may be a little bit difficult. There's a double layer of cells. So we have the basement membrane and free surface here, okay, here, basement membrane, free surface, this thing here would be called the lumen, etc. okay, now sometimes what confuses people, what confuses high school students when they're looking at slides is they see this word, cilia, or the word ciliated, Ooh. Spelled that wrong? 
ciliated. That means, I don't know if you can tell on this micrograph, but there's like little, each cell has little hair-like cilia projecting out of it. This will be important in your trachea, for example, to help get things out of your trachea. So that means ciliated. These are little cilia, kind of like tiny little hairs, even though they're not really hair because they're way smaller. Moving on. Okay, next page. So the difference between simple and stratified, I think you can figure out now. If you understand that these are cells, right, then that enables you to understand that simple means one layer and stratified would be multiple layers. Excuse the spelling. Multiple Multiple layers. So uh, there can be stratified. There can be stratified. Let's see. There can be stratified cells. Simple tissue. Sorry, stratified tissue and simple tissue. And then again, uh, as far as describing and kinds of tissue, cuboidal. Remember, this is in three dimensions. Now, the only thing I dislike about this particular diagram is that columnar cells, generally in columnar tissue, the nuclei all line up at the bottom along the basement membrane. Okay, this is uh, slightly confusing when you start looking at tissues in the microscope. Those will generally be lined up along the bottom. So there's a couple things that are shown here that I wanted to talk about. First of all, uh, if you look at these different um, micrographs, this can be a bit confusing because this slide in particular, number two here, has some, uh, can be a little confusing. What you need to understand is that when you look at a micrograph, when you look at a picture of these things, you're going to see more tissues than just the epithelial. Epithelial tissue, lines, openings, and then underneath that will be connective tissue every time. So, like here, this is the epithelial tissue, and number three here, this is the epithelial tissue, but then there's some tissue down at the bottom that can get confusing. And again, here you see the little cilia. Okay, so... Uh, this would be simple here, and these cells aren't necessarily, the nuclei of the cells aren't necessarily lined up at the bottom, but they're kind of far down, so this would be simple columnar. And this would be, because you can't see any definition to the cells, they're like tightly packed together, squished down. I always remember as squamous is squished. So they're kind of squished together group of cells. Here's the free surface. Here's the basement membrane. This would be stratified. I'm going to abbreviate squamous here. So there's an interesting feature of columnar and pseudo stratified. This is pseudo means false. I'm not going to go through that whole page with you. You can figure that out pseudo stratified columnar here because the nuclei are at different layers They're like scattered all around the cells go all the way down um simple columnar and pseudo stratified columnar have this interesting feature you can see here 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 okay those cells not the cell this isn't the cell remember the cell is the thing with the nucleus in it, and then it has at the top this clear little thing. These are called goblet cells. And these goblet cells are what are responsible for secreting things to the surface. So in your nose, there may be goblet cells secreting mucus on the surface. In your uh, intestines, there will be goblet cells that would do the secreting in your salivary glands goblet cells would be secreting saliva onto the surface. 
most of these openings, in fact, almost I can't think of a surface inside of you or outside of you that wouldn't have something secreted onto it to keep it moist. You can feel that by rubbing your tongue on the inside of your cheek. So, summarize then, epithelial tissue The four verbs, covers, lines, protects, secretes. Okay. It, uh, it usually, or, um, it can, uh, it's usually connected to, well, sorry, uh, layered with connective tissue. So in other words, epithelial tissue, lines, connective tissue is holding the epithelial tissue on. I'm drawing this in one dimension, and basically, I mean, we should have, I should have put little cells here to represent the connective tissue, and that's to be the basement membrane. I mean, the epithelial tissue, and that'd be the basement membrane. So there's a summary of epithelial tissue. So, um, what you're going to do is, over on the demo table, I have slides with uh, epithelial in the, in the brown box, epithelial tissue slides. And what you're going to do is, you're going to go grab a... Simple cuboid and go to images. You're like, I have no idea what I'm trying to look at here. And you have to zoom in to these individual little cells that go around this opening. You're like, these look like cells themselves. But then you realize you're only on 40 magnification. You're only on the smallest. And you have to zoom in. And when you zoom in to, say, 400 magnification, that's when you get views that look like this. Like this. So, um, the trick is going to be to remember what epithelial tissue does. It lines openings. Find things, like if you have a slide like this one here, you see all these little openings. So, go and zoom in on those and identify these tissues that surround those openings as simple columnar. Because eventually, what you're going to do is you're going to get something like this. Here we go with stratified squamous. These, here's the basement membrane. This is the free surface in all these cells. Okay, but kids get confused because they don't remember what they're actually looking for. And then they get confused because they're not zoomed in enough. So make sure that you get a good view of the slide, zoom into high power, 400 magnification, which is the eyepiece is 10, 
so that'd be the 40 lens, and then try to be able to see uh, the, like, for example, here, simple columnar cells all lined up on the opening. But again, super easy here because if they found a really nice picture and zoomed in, you will have to be doing that yourself. 